We just got back from a showing of The Martian. Yes, we just saw The Martian in theaters three months after it left theaters. But that's cool, because we're poor, and that theater's cheap. Um, 4 50 for three tickets, yo. Yeah. Phil left. He could have joined us, but I didn't ask him to. I'm a good friend. Um, so anyway, thoughts? What'd you think? Um, overall, very, very good. Um, I thought that the departures they made from the book made sense um, and were logical progressions of the characters in the movie and the way that they had characterized the characters. Um, I even preferred uh, one of the changes, which we'll get to later. Um, and I mean, of course, they simplified the science a lot, but they did so in a way that still didn't feel like it was insulting your intelligence, which is very rare. Yeah, it was definitely one of the best book to movie adaptations I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Too often they'll change plots and characters and they they change a little bit. They change something at the end which I don't want to spoil because this movie's still in theaters and see it. Please see it. It's very 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 good. Um, and, and they adjusted like uh, the race of a few characters and adjusted a few names here and there but it was still like very diverse cast which I appreciated. They didn't try to whitewash anything. They actually, it feels like they went out of their way to include uh, people of color and women, especially, like, mm -hmm. which made my little feminist heart happy. But um, they definitely, like, they enlarged Commander Lewis's role, which I appreciated a lot because you don't see um, female commanders on space units. It's always, no offense to the original Uhura because she was incredible, but it's always the Uhura who repeats what the computer says. Or, um... Like the uh, security weaver in Galaxy Quest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to reference something he did yeah. earlier. And also, some of the uh, performances. Donald Glover. Oh my god. He's only in, like, four scenes, but he just takes over. And he hasn't done a lot since Community. I know he, he quit acting for a while to, to do his uh, Childish Gambino. And do what you gotta do, brother. Like... But coming back in, and seeing him in this movie was fantastic. Matt Damon is a force. He is a force to be reckoned with in this. I um, was not... After reading the book, I couldn't see Matt Damon by the end of the movie. Actually, by about the midway point of the movie, he convinced me. Mm -hmm. Like, there were, there were even some early shots where I forgot it was Matt Damon, which you don't do with that kind of face. And... It was very, very good. Yeah, it was very, very, very well done. A good, a good uh, film for Ridley Scott, too, because he hasn't had a great movie in a while. I know, like, I think his last... Did he do something since Prometheus? I'm not sure. I but Prometheus so. is the last one that I can remember, and it wasn't the best. <laughs> Prometheus School of Running Away From Things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you read the book before this. Yes. I listened to the audiobook before this. Now, what yes. would you recommend somebody who has no idea what the story is to do first? I know that's a tough question. I'm just throwing it at you. I think it really <laughs> depends on the kind of moviegoer that you are. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for me, I appreciated reading the book first because I can read faster than I can get information out of a movie. Like, this book is what? Four... Four hundred and... Like, forty pages. Four hundred and thirty-five. Almost and a page for every day he's on Mars. <laughs> every soul he's on Mars. Um, but... And I started it on a Friday and I was finished by Tuesday. Like, it... I almost couldn't put it down. It's so good. Um, but that's the kind of person that I am. I prefer yeah. reading the source material to watching the adaptation, but he's kind of the opposite. I'm, I'm the opposite. I definitely recommend seeing the movie first, because I, I can understand it. It may not be a story for everybody. Um, there's a lot of science, and yeah. from what I've heard and read, a lot of very accurate science. So the movie is far more accessible and easier to dive into, but if you enjoy the movie, the book, there's a whole like chunk of the book that the movie just kind of glosses over a whole couple months as he travels uh, across the landscape there's of a, Mars. There's a seven month time skip at one point in, in the, the movie. Yeah, which I believe it, that time is accelerated in the book, but you get that seven months and you get the whole journey and there's more story there. So if you, if you want to, if you see the movie and then you're interested, check out the book. I also recommend the audiobook. Audible's not sponsoring this because nobody watches this. But 
if they did, I'd be plugging them right now, because that's how I, I got it. I got the the book off of Audible, and the narration, the guy who, um, I wish I could remember his name off the top of my head, but the guy who uh, reads the book in the audiobook version is fantastic. And I still hear his voice as Watney and not Matt Damon. And that's not discounting what Matt Damon did. It's just, that's the first, ha uh, first way I heard it, and it's always going to stick with me there. Um, another thing that I really liked about the movie was um, you get, even the minor characters have like good fleshed out details to them. Um, like Mindy Park, when you first meet her, she's, it's 1.30 in the morning and she's eating a Pop-Tart and drinking, a cu she's making a cup of coffee. So you get like these little human moments with all of these characters and it's never just like a lazy throwing of a character in your face. Like there's always, you know more about them before you ever meet them than anything yeah. else. Like there's a ton of characters where they all have, I don't want to say quirks because that's too one dimensional, but you can tell just by like how they carry themselves and, and this is also a testament to the performances in the movie um, how they carry themselves and also like what's on their desks and stuff and you, you get that character right away and then they open their mouths and speak and it's just fantastic the only thing that I think they kind of lost uh, from the movie to from the book to the movie I wish there was more I wish they played more with the animosity between Vincent who is played by uh, pardon oh, me well, I'm not even gonna try Chuetel and Geofor, I believe. That's closer than I will ever get. Um, and um, Jeff Daniels' character. Uh, what is his name? What is his name? I'm not sure. And Mitch Henderson, who's played by Sean Bean. Which the three of the mm -hmm. three of them in the book have this incredible triumvirate of just like super strong wills, and but they all fold at different points, and mm -hmm. you get to see them push back and forth, and you have these three incredible actors bouncing off of each other and it just it they didn't utilize that as much as they could have the cats are chasing each other and it's <laughs> enjoyable for me <laughs> but no I, I totally agree with that like there but I I'm curious um, how much was cut because it was a bit long ish it was over two hours right yeah I didn't it, even pay attention it's it was like so the movie started at like 7.30 and we were out of there by 10 o'clock, so... Something like that. So it was a decent chunk of time. Um, I didn't realize it was that late. Oh, it's not that... yeah. Watch as we check the time. <laughs> um, I don't even remember. That's what I Oh, it's like, for. I'm sure a lot was cut out and I want to see some of those extra scenes because... Like, I'm sure that there's some more of that character development that, that Cody longs for there. But I was I was okay with it. It had been enough time since I had listened to the audiobook that, like, I didn't quite miss any any of the character relationships. Um, I was more just enjoying the science. I really just love the science and, like, the figuring everything out. Like, problem solving. It's a movie about solving a problem, and that's exciting for me. It's not your normal action movie. I also really appreciate it. I'm not spoilers, I won't, but um, the ending credits, you, f you saw all the characters at the launch of the next Ares 4 mission. Uh, Ares um, 5. I that was Ares 5? Was Ares oh, 5. sorry. Ares 4 I think got canceled because he took their oh, yeah. ascension vehicle. Oh, yes. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't it's hear fine. that. You it's didn't fine. hear that. It's fine. We'll just flash a big spoiler warning over that. <laughs> I'm not editing this. <laughs> uh, so, but you see all of the characters, what they're going through by Ares 5, mm -hmm. and it was an incredibly smart way to do the credits because as each actor's face popped up, they did their name next to their face. And it's a little bit it's a little bit more than you got at the end of the novel. You, yeah. The I don't think novel, anything was... No, the end of the novel is like that, and so you're... Done. So it's nice getting like a little bit after too, which I, I greatly appreciated. I longed for it by the end of the movie. Like, I was like what what happens next? And and they deliver. I think it delivers on every level. Um, Matt Damon deserves his Oscar nomination. Oh, absolutely. I haven't seen all of the performances. I don't know if he deserves to win it, but he definitely deserves recognition for it. It's very 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 good performance. Um, wonderful movie. Highly recommend. Uh, I think it's on iTunes now, um, on demand services. Check it out. Five stars. Um, haven't quite decided what I'm doing yet tomorrow, um, because I'm recording this about a week before it goes up. <laughs> Head of the game for once. So, 
like, share, and subscribe. Suggest a movie for me to watch in the comments below. And I'll see you tomorrow.